Hi everyone, this is Chris with Learn Web Logic Online, and I'm here today to show you how easy it is to deploy Web Logic using Docker. So for this video, you're going to want a computer with enough memory and storage to run Docker containers and Web Logic. I've specified at least four gigs of RAM free. You could probably get away with two gigs of RAM, but you'll get better performance out of four and at least four gigs of free disk space. What I'm going to show you here works on just about every major operating system, Linux, Windows, and OS X. However, in the video, I'm going to be using uh, CentOS 7, but you can use Ubuntu, any flavor of Linux that supports running Docker, and obviously a high bandwidth internet connection. We're going to be um, using, we're going to be downloading Docker images from the internet as well as the Oracle WebLogic software. So let's talk about the advantages. Why would we deploy WebLogic using Docker? Deploying WebLogic is usually a two-part process. First, the Oracle WebLogic product is installed using either the GUI installer or the silent installer, which can be used for automating installations. The second part involves deploying a WebLogic domain, which, if you're not familiar, contains your app server or servers and all the resources required to support your application, such as data sources, JMS resources, and so forth. So to go from installation to a running WebLogic environment takes an understanding of WebLogic itself and a considerable amount of time and expertise, regardless if you're standing up a development environment or a hardened clustered production environment. Deploying WebLogic using Docker provides many advantages for both developer and administrators alike. With Docker, you can increase developer efficiency by providing Docker images for spinning up WebLogic environments without having to know all the intricacies of WebLogic. So imagine onboarding new developers to your team, and rather than providing them with lots of documentation, scripts, wikis, procedures for building a dev environment, and having to manage all the software and library dependencies to support that environment, you simply point them to a Docker image that has everything set up the way you want it. So you can see that using a Docker image that has a predefined tech stack provides everyone with an identical development environment. So rather than installing every bit of software and configuring every bit of environment variable, you just pull down the Docker image and run it, and that's your environment. So this reduces, maybe even eliminates the, hey, this worked in my environment syndrome. And I see this one a lot. Another benefit to using Docker as a deployment tool for WebLogic is that it allows you to modernize your enterprise apps so that you can run them anywhere and scale easily. Containers by their very nature are portable since the entire app stack is encapsulated in an image. A containerized application can run just about anywhere in any cloud or service provider that supports the Docker engine. So if your company is looking to move to the cloud and you have all these legacy enterprise applications, and you can't refactor right away because refactoring is expensive and takes a long time, Docker is one way you can lift and shift your solution to the cloud. So this can serve as an interim step to getting to the cloud. Okay, enough with the background material on Docker and WebLogic. Let's start getting our hands dirty. Oracle has a public GitHub repo containing a ton of Docker images for a wide variety of Oracle products, including WebLogic. You can see here, I've got a link out to their, their repo. It's github.com slash oracle slash docker dash images. And you'll find looking at this screenshot, which I took several months ago, we can see that there's images for Container Cloud, Glassfish, which is an open source J2E application server, OpenJDK, Oracle Database, Oracle HTTP server, which is their version of Apache, Java, and then Fusion Middleware Infrastructure, which actually contains the WebLogic server that we're gonna use. So Oracle has provided these Docker files to accelerate your adoption and use of Docker for WebLogic. All we need to do is clone this repo and build what we need. And for paying customers, if you have an Oracle support account, Oracle prov provides a curated and supported container registry. So it already has pre-built images Whereas the GitHub repo, we're going to download the Docker files and build, our, build the images ourselves. The container registry at oracle.com 
provides already built images that you can use if you're a paying customer. So for this video, I'm gonna be using my Linux workstation. Like I said, I'm gonna be using CentOS 7. You could be using Ubuntu, any flavor of Linux where you can install the Docker engine. Git, we're gonna use Git to pull down uh, the Oracle GitHub repo and then Docker Community Edition, which is the free version of Docker. So let me talk about building these Docker images. Um, images, uh, images composed together make up a Docker container. Docker container is a running instance of an image. If you're not aware, Docker images are built using Docker files. Docker files contain instructions for building the image, such as executing commands to install software, setting up the OS environment, such as environment variables and creating directories, as well as creating users. So imagine if you were scripting um, your development environment, standing up your development environment, including installing the libraries that you needed, setting environment variables, creating users and directories, and so on and so forth. All of that pre-setup work is what would go into your Docker file to set up your environment. The Docker files that we're getting from Oracle handle this for us automatically to support Java and WebLogic. And once we've built these images, then we can use them to deploy WebLogic over and over again. 